scriptures are filled with hope. Hope unlocks divine strength. This is what it says in Psalm 31, 24. Be of good courage. He shall strengthen your heart, all you that hope in the Lord. You want strength? You ever feel weak? You feel like you're just wilting? If you hope in the Lord, he says, I will strengthen you. What did, what did Paul pray in Ephesians? That you might strengthen them uh, in the inner man, in, in their hearts, that they might be strengthened. That's something we can pray for others, but it's something we can also get. If we will hope in the Lord, he will strengthen us. It unlocks divine strength. Secondly, hope attracts God's attention. You know what I mean by that? It says, Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those that fear him and those that hope for him. And what he's saying is, I've got a beacon on you. And he says, I'm, I'm tracking you. And if you've got your hope on, he says, I've got, I'm, you're in my sights. It attracts his attention. God is looking for people hoping in him. Why? Because God says, I'm watching over my word to perform it in Jeremiah. Jeremiah is consistent. He says, God has promised that if he finds someone that is looking into his word and hoping in his word, he is locked into that one and he is going to perform what he promised in them. It's exciting. If you want God's attention, you know, people spend all their life trying to have someone's attention on them. Have you ever noticed that? Especially in school, you know, kids are all get, trying to get attention, you know. And I remember I had a camp director once that stood up and stood on top of the dinner table and he just, hey, everybody, let me have your attention, he said. And everybody stopped and looked at him and he says, thanks, I love attention. You know, that's how people are. We love attention. God says this, he said, you want my attention? He says, hope in me. Hope opens God's ears. For in thee, O Lord, do I hope thou wilt hear. How exciting. God, when we are hoping, he is listening for our prayers. I mean, he uses, that's an anthropomorphism. He doesn't have ears. You know, God is a spirit. But what he's saying is, nothing that you're, is on your heart am I missing. Okay? I want you to know that. Hope is God's desire for us, Psalm 39, 7. And now, Lord, what do I wait for? My hope is in you. That's his desire, that our hope be in him. Hope dispels gloom, Psalm 42, 5. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I will praise him. He is the help of my countenance. Verse 11, why art thou cast down? Why art thou disquieted? My hope is in thee, O God. I will yet praise him who is the health of my countenance. I like that verse health of my countenance. The scriptures say God wants us to have a healthy countenance. Do people see, I mean, whether you were, whether you were born with an ornery look, has God become the health of your countenance so that you smile? Even when you don't feel good, even when things are going badly, do you have a healthy countenance? Do you glow? Does the Spirit of God radiate out? Is, are you a, a living color photograph of Christ? That's what Paul says. We're living impressions of Christ, that, that we bear his image and that, that he's written in the fleshy tables of our heart, not in just the clay st or the stone tablets, but in our lives. And the Spirit of God energizes us so that we're a portrait of Christ. Now, Christ wasn't giddy. He wasn't silly. He wasn't, you know, he, he, there was a settled peacefulness. He had a healthy countenance. Is that what we have? Do you have a healthy countenance? How exciting. Hope in God is to be lifelong. And uh, Psalm 71, 5 says this, For thou art my hope, O Lord God, thou art my trust from my youth. I mean, the same God that, that leads you through the mumps of youth and, and you come to know as a young person, if you were fortunate enough to have, he is the one that's going to be our hope for our lifetime. Thrilling to think about. Verse 14 but I will hope continually, Psalm 71, 14, I will yet praise thee more and more. Do you know Psalm 93 says that the older you get, the more fruitful you're supposed to get. That's what really bothers me when I see older people saying, oh, I don't do that anymore. I don't, you know, I don't serve. I don't teach Sunday school. I don't, you know, I don't work around the church. I'm, I, I did all that. But the Bible says that those that dwell long in the courts of God, those are the ones that, that are fat and flourishing and they, they're like green trees. They're just overflowing with, with fruit for the Lord. Uh, I'll tell you what, I pray that, that I never get afflicted with the idea that I'm going to retire and enjoy myself. You know, I earned it. And I hope you don't either. 
I hope that you want to flourish in the courts of God and that you never retire. You want to serve him to the end and that you want to dwell in his courts and that you want to be overflowing with fruitfulness for him. And it's a choice you make right now. I worked with uh, 864 senior citizens at Grace Community Church when I was just starting out in the ministry. And what a blessing that was. And I'll tell you what, there were two kinds. There were kinds that were cantankerous and ornery. I mean, they, they were so critical, and they just they criticized everybody, and they, they didn't like how they were, and they complained, and said their medicine cost too much, and they couldn't get around, and cars weren't good enough anymore, and government's doing this. And then there are all the rest. And they were just, I mean, with gnarled fingers, all with uh, arthritis and rheumatoid arthritis, they were folding bulletins, pushing their knuckles on them. And they were, some of them were in wheelchairs and everything like that. And they'd come in and they'd say, we'll do anything. I, I've seen them pushing a broom in their wheelchair. They didn't accomplish anything, but it was a blessing for everybody that watched them. And you know what I thought about? Those people didn't get that way, I'd bet, in their 80s. They were serving the Lord, loving the Lord the whole way through. And those cantankerous people didn't get cantankerous when they had to start taking prednisone. They were always that way. You know what? You and I have to make a choice in life. And, and if, you, if you're headed on the critical path, but you're still young and you can hide it, if you don't get out of that path, and if you don't praise him yet more and more, you're, you're in for, for a, an abysmal end. Because those, I remember, I used to visit them, and, and the ones that were joyful, they radiated in those rest homes. They had a ministry. All the people, I remember one of them, all the, the people in their little creeper chairs were creeping into her room. They all wanted to be in her room. And they would all fall asleep in that room because they wanted to be around Karna. Because Karna loved the Lord so much. She'd read the scriptures. I looked at her. She wasn't even reading it. She was quoting them. She just loved the Lord. And, and in her old age, she was fat and flourishing for God. I hope that that's what we want to be. I hope that our hope in God is lifelong. Hope is a choice that they might set their hope in God, Psalm 78, 7. Hope is in God's word. Remember thy word unto thy servant upon which you have caused me to hope. We need to hope in our creator. Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, who made heaven, the earth, and the sea, and all that is in it. 